We're going to guys. It's Calvin from the cartoon company. Called in to see a man. Um, he's been talking to me over the last couple of days about getting a mail care package. And our wisdom that means an aftermarket computer for his 1UZ. We're going to pop in and see him. He needs a bit of advice on what he's doing with his uh, Hilux. Tell me. Yeah. Anyway, um, so you're working on your Hilux. What year is this one? 06. It's an 06. Two wheel drive KUN Hilux. And it's getting an early Lexus with a little bit of assistance and enhancement. So, what issues are we having? This one's going to be getting a Link Storm. Um, I'll show you a, a, a bit about the, the care package he's getting. We're going to put a Link Storm on it. Well, Toby's going to wire it up. Um, individual coils, bigger injectors, so leads are disappearing, and a few other bits and pieces to be done. Yeah, once you've got rid of this stuff here, mm -hmm. of course you're going to leave that temp sensor in, so that goes to the factory ECU. Yeah. Doesn't go to the DAC, it goes to the factory ECU. Okay. Leave the factory ECU in place, yeah. so that's got to be powered up, and then you'll need to put a sensor in for it, because this one's... Now, so you can, if you wanted to, you could bring your, your that temp sensor into the link through one of the AN volts with an external pull-up using the pull-up from the ECU. In the ECU, so you use the factory ECU's pull-up. Yep. In this situation, it's very very easy for you to mount your temp sensor where the cold start injector is. Thread is different, so you have to do an adapter or weld it up and retap it. Yep. So put a temp sensor here. Yep. And use that one for the link and keep them separate. It'll be just so much easier. Okay, yep. so that that's pretty basic. Leads go, caps, rotors, and I get my slicer out, and I slice it pretty much through here. Just right where the, sort of where the cap bolt's on, where the, where the join is. Yep. And that way you've still got the bolt to hold the front covers on. Okay. So that keeps that really simple. Yep. Um, I ditch this whole front loom. Throw it away. Oh, throw that to so that cam sensor, the right hand cam sensor, don't run it. Okay. And I ditch this loom and when I build it, I bring the wiring through here, yep. bring it through here, and then tuck it down in behind the pulley. Down the crank sensor. Down the crank sensor. So there's no joins from the crank sensor to the ECU. Yep. Um, and I normally build this stuff will run the factory ECU still. Yep. I normally put fan relays in here which I'm going to be wiring one. I've got a 3UZ one to do. So I use these holes. Yep. Um, and I, I use the glow circuit to feed power inside to the ECU. Yep. So it's glow through that relay inside. I normally just bridge the relay. Fan there, fan relay in there. And then build a little lot of relays inside for the, for the link. Yep. Where's your throttle body? Oh, it's not here? So it's getting it. Yeah, it's made from a uh, GM one, but it's a 102mm throttle, so the inside is the same diameter as the outside of that. Yeah. So a big, big throttle body. Yeah, it's just going to get mounted from there, so. Yeah. That's off the back of the supercharger. Yeah, so the air temp, you can get under that manifold just fine, you can get under here. Yeah, there's room between here and the middle of it. So yeah, so. Chap, chap, chap the base yeah, so. How thick is your plate? 16mm. Oh, so plenty. Yeah. Yep, so you can just drill a hole through it. It's yeah. got an O-ring in it. Put a bit of silicon around just to keep it in. Yeah. So that'll be fine. These are great because there's so much room under the bonnet, eh? Mm. Is that clearing? No. Oh, your nose isn't clearing because you've got the box that's so big. Yeah. And the other thing is to shrink the box down, but I was just worried about airflow for that, so. Are you putting um, water meth into it or anything like that? No. Not at this stage? No, not at the moment, no. <laughs> okay, so that gets rid of these. 1990 leads, mm -hmm. so original leads gone. Um, this, these fellas, so weld that, weld that up. Yep. That fella there, weld it up. Yep. Weld that one up. Yep. And I even, and I'd be tempted to weld. Yep. Oh, this was an LS for This was a. Um, so this one had uh, EGR, right? Yes. Yeah, it was EGR, right? Eh? Yeah. Because it's got the extra water fitting here. Yeah, they're cool. It, yeah. So it's it's LS 400. So because. But it didn't have, oh, the later ones had the oil coolers on them. 
the acorns are a pain on the side when they because they swap sides. The side here. Uh, when you put an LS in them, mm -hmm. I mount that pump on, make, adapt it to it. on, on the LS, yep. and, and then you run the factory lines and everything. Yeah, because it sits at the bottom there, it's only a little belt there. Yeah. Yep. Have. That's the trouble I have now. They literally sit about four mil under the edge of that, half under, half exposed. So I need to try and open up the front ends so I can have the loop at the back. Oh, yep. And then bring the feet in, feet up. Yeah, you'll be fine. That'll be fine. Yep. And then just obviously get these welded up. There's plenty of thickness here about the weld up or bung them. Yeah, they should punch you out or something. You'll yeah. get them out. Yeah, we'll just hack the end off and get some things welded to it. Yep. Cut, so a clean cut. And either, if you don't have much room, see I normally put a, like a bolt in there yep. with a washer, yep. but if you've got no room, then weld. Yeah, but there's plenty of thickness in there for that, so it goes down about 15 mil. Okay. Yeah. So you can just squeeze your fuel rails in? Yeah, there's enough, like there's probably about 5 mil height between them, so on a standard injector link. So the other injectors are coming out the same length. Yeah. So, yeah. They just, yeah. so the only other thing was to bring um, off the ends of them was to bring the like a 90 off the end of them, get rid of the hooks and that. Yep. And that. But whether I can run the loop at the front of the motor and then feed in from the back and return from the back. Yeah, well, you're, you're getting rid because you're getting rid of the leads. Yep. There'll be room to run something, even a brave line or something. Like yep. And you're not going to need that temp sensor? No. I think. If I've got a VVTI one, I might be actually have the blanker for that. Oh, okay. So you actually put a proper little blanker in there. Uh, yep. So you ditch that. Because this is coming off, so this here is going to get cut off on a 45. And it's just going to have another outlet welded up on it. Yeah. So that, that's just got an elbow on the original diesel radiator. Yeah, and there's going to be plenty of room in there anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because originally it was going to run through here, run a solid pipe, but we're worried about belt flex, so... And that, but it's just easier to come off there and do a hard 90 onto where the weather yeah, pipe yeah. goes, so... Cut it right back here. Probably right flush, oh yeah. It's cut it right back here. Yep. And then you can just bring it off nicely, yeah. Just keep it right away from it, yeah. Yeah, yeah just cut right back in there. Yeah. So instead of having like a dog leg, have a just a str like that. Yeah. That's going to fit. On it. Cut. Go hard, go right back in there. Of course, that's not going to be there. The other option, if you wanted, you because you're not going to have, well, you're still going to have a cover here, but you could actually bring, if you wanted to bring your crank sensor, because you're going to have stuff in here, yep. you could bring your crank sensor wiring through here if you wanted. Okay, down the side. And down the side? Yep. Um, yeah, with, wire, with this cover here, mm -hmm. with these top covers, I cut them off here. The cover? Yeah, just cut the... So you've oh, got the cover what? on the front, and you've got the bit that goes along. Yep, I cut it, it off there. Yeah, leave it straight to the coils. Yep. And I normally leave... Well, it means you can just lift that cover off the mm -hmm. coils. Yeah, oh, of course, got to take the whole thing apart, yeah. Yeah, without taking, the, taking all this front off. Yep. Do they actually bolt for these holes, do they? No, not no. quite. No. They either bolt a bracket or I use the cover with a bit of foam on it. To hold it. And you, the foam, it sits up a little bit higher. Yep. But if you get on the lathe, what, do a little spacer. Yep. Where's your booster port going to go? Um, I was just going to put something in the back of here. Just to tap the footing to the side of that. Just to probably get the highest point. Goes in here. Eh? Goes here. You reckon at the top? Oh, of course. Vacuum. Goes in here. Yeah. Isn't here. Uh-huh. So you... Boost is going to go like, yeah, straight across in there. Yeah, from behind the throttle body. Yeah. Yep. High point of vacuum. Yeah. In the dash, when you do the dash, mm -hmm. pull the dash apart, and the diesel warning light, mm -hmm. that for the fuel filter, buzz it off with your soldering iron. Oh, yeah. Take the LED off. Yep. And um, <laughs> taco. So yeah, for the taco can run by the from the ECU fine. You run that diesel taco, not a problem. Yep. But Depends how you reset that step, because that, you're running a GM stepper with the four wires. Yep. You've got a choice of whether to reset the stepper on key on. Okay, so you, each time you turn the key on, you have like a lockout for three seconds, yep. so the stepper can reset, and then you don't have to do ECU hold. If you do an ECU hold power, you're going to use another output, so you're going to have only have three left over because you're using all your ignitions yeah, for coils, down. which is better. You've got sequential injection, so you've got your eight injectors, you've got your eight coils, you've got your eight outputs, but you're using four of them for that idle speed control. Yep. And if you use the ECU hold, you're using five, and you use your four left over, or three left over, yep. which is fuel pump, fan, and taco. No engine check light. Okay, yeah. I haven't put it in it, because the other thing that I often do, which you, you're not gonna have be able to, is because you don't have enough outputs, is I have to run an oil pressure sensor, into the link, yep. and then I use the link to control the dash, you simply don't have enough outputs. Yep. 
But if you wanted to put an oil pressure sensor on it as well, mm. it's about 150 bucks for an oil pressure sensor, and then you've got oil pressure at your link. Okay. You'd have to tee up, yep. so let me know if you need that. Or you can put the wiring in for it yep. and put it in later. So that's just got a safety cut off if it gets low pressure? Yep. So it's got a, you can actually get a physical oil pressure yep. in your link. So you can actually log it. And it's a sensor and a plug. Yep. So I thought we'd finished here. And then they said, let's have a look at this. And we're, we're going to go out the back. Let's have a look at this, shall we? It's dark. So you guys will have to guess what the car is. There we go. That is going to grunt, eh? Mm -hmm. there's, we went to a drift day and there's a Sylvia with the barrow motor in it. Holy jeez, it went well. Mm. Make it go. Chop, chop. Yeah, yeah money. How much <laughs> radiator? You know, I've got one getting custom made from Drop T. So, yeah, custom, custom made by Cora. Dark, no point looking at you because it's dark. We're not going to see you anyway. <laughs> That's going to grunt, man. That's awesome. I did have a JGX 100 radiator in there, but it wasn't going to work. So, I got a custom side tank one and he's just shortening it down for me and relocating the sense. <clears throat> so, using the Ford gearbox. Uh, yeah, you got the Ford box. Yeah. Shift it perfectly, perfectly in the hole. Oh look at that! Yep. <laughs> like perfectly in the hole. Yep. Nice in there. We're on the tilt and internal um slave solder that's all hooked up and running, so clutch unit sorted. And the bonnet you've cut is it SR6 bonnet? So cut the hole out and use oh, yep. um, XR8, sorry. XR8 bonnet bolts on it so that the motor can actually clear. It's not mounted properly yet. That looks good though. That's that get, looks grouse. It's gonna get too well nice That's perfect. So it gives that hint of what's under the bonnet, but it needs it to be able to close the bonnet. So that's what that's that's going to go go go, go grouse, eh? Power to weight ratio is going to be crazy. Easy way to make power. Oh, yeah. More cubes yep. and put a turbo. Yep. Real simple. Yeah. Now they're but, actually physically a big engine, even though their cubes are up for there. They're actually a really tall engine. You know? Yeah, it is. Yep. Turbo's yeah. probably a little bit too big for now, but it'll do But it's as low and as far back as it can go. And yep. Cool. That's awesome. Well, I, I really got to get going. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so my week hasn't quite gone to plan but I have learnt from doing conversions that at least you have a plan to work to and uh, then when things don't quite work you put your big boy socks on and you just keep hammering and come up with a solution I was heading up to Auckland of course on on Friday last week and uh, I called in to see Toby there was no planning in that video at all and what we got is what we got and part of my footage was corrupted we were just babbling anyway it seems this video has got a little bit of a mind of its own and, and is taking its own course and that's probably one of the great things about you know real time I get one go at it you don't get a second take at all and uh, man we say some crazy things the English language is just nuts the way we talk and communicate but I'm going to drop off this computer to Toby often with the, the way we say things there's stops and pauses and man grunts but we kind of get the message across so as I drop off this, this uh, setup that I've put together for Toby, and it made me think that when we get asked for a, a present, or what we'd like for a present, so often guys are hard to buy for, but next time you get asked, what do you want for your Christmas present? Say an aftermarket ECU. Sure gonna beat socks and undies, and whilst they're great, an aftermarket ECU's really gonna take the cake, isn't it? <laughs> What's that? It's like Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's like the best kind of present you can get. Except you did have to buy them, but but apart from that, makes buying up, yourself a present. Makes up for that. That's right. We'll go ahead and unpack it. I have a package. I have Storm has not been opened. It is locked. Mm -hmm. There is no map in it. Mm -hmm. But I will come back or I'll get a map for you 
and I'll just email it and you can, or you can just, if I'm over, I'll just unlock it for you. Easy. Well, you just wire it, I'll unlock it. A pair of looms. So A loom and a B loom. Mm -hmm. you, the pins pop out. You've popped pins out of them before? Yep. Easy. Connectors. Mm -hmm. There's an air temp sensor. Yep. So that can just drill up no, underneath. Fine, yep. Easy as, it's an O-ring on it. Water temp sensor, coil connectors, cam and crank sensor, two knock sensors, throttle position sensor for that LS and uh, LS out of speed control four wire. Injector plugs for you, mm -hmm. plus one of them is for the air temp, so there's nine of them. Okay. Three bar map sensor. And eight coils. Brand spanking new coils, eight of them. So you just cut them off, cut through there. Oh, you just cut the side of them off. Basically what I do yep. is I aim to just go through the metal. Yep. And then I just put them on the linisher and just linish off that last little bit. So it kind of they kind of sits quite snug against the side of it. Yep. They don't fall around too much. Beautiful. Easy, eh? Mm. You got some work to do now. Um, oh, I was actually checking out too, they have put a uh, selectable pull-up on the temp inputs. Mm -hmm. So if you were just going to run the single one, but myself, I would still run two temp sensors, just going to make it easier. Yeah. Any nibbles on your G1? Yeah, heaps. It's the right price. Yeah. For someone who's running a jet boat or something like that, and they just want an ECU to make it go, yeah. and they don't want anything too over the top, that's going to be perfect for them, eh? Well, two people ask me if it's an Aussie, and one wants it sent to the States, and I'm just like, ready? Yeah. Really? That's a new one. Yeah, and having hand controllers and stuff. There's not that many of them around. I've still got hand control and, and all the stuff for them. The you can still get adapters for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm just going to go across it for um, the operator. So Perfect. One you did mounted backwards onto the um, VW box. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, he wants on a supercharger as well, but the system, the reason I was upgrading was the fact you're going to call the pipe. Yeah. It's, a not, it's a nice, not a bad setup. Have you done any more work on it? Look how clean it is in there. That is spotless, eh? It's like it's, it's like it hasn't even run. Wait, wait, so I just turn up to drop off ECUs and the one using turbo turns up. Uh, as I was saying on the drive here. This video has kind of got a mind of its own. It looks like we've got another car to look at. So we're gonna go outside and uh, check out another 1UZ uh, powered vehicle. I'm Calvin anyway. Oh, Kyle. Hey Kyle. So it is a Sora. There's a little bit more noise than normal coming out the back. Give it a rev. That sounds pretty quiet. Yeah, so um, it's been a project for the last two years. I still have a few things that I need to fix on it. Uh, wiring mainly. It's running a um, 0154 gearbox and a open diff at the moment. And look at that. So you converted it to manual? Yes, so it's all converted. Um, I've done all the work myself because I'm a bit of a fabricator. So I got me a uh, couple of adapter plates, laser cut, and um, yeah, pretty much adapted it myself. Um, and you use the V-Dub? That's the V-Dub Audi coil? Yes, that is. Uh, yeah, uh, Lynx Storm Plus. Um, same yeah, thing. Awesome, awesome thing to run. It was so easy to wire up and straight in. Uh, even put the BBTI tune on it at first and started up first pop. So yeah, a little bit of work still need to be done, but she's come a long way. And you find the coil set up is okay? It's yeah. easy enough to put in? Uh, 
Uh, They're quite a big coil, eh? They are. Only thing I had to change on them was the uh, rubber boot on it. Uh, I had to cut it back a bit because otherwise it actually goes into your rubber seal on your uh, rocker covers. Oh, which yeah. Will cause a leak, I guess. Uh, yeah. You could have put the idle speed on it. <laughs> um, to be honest, I had it, um, but I was running Spitronics. Oh, this, yep. This one, and that one's idle control unit actually um, broke on me. Okay. So I blanked it off, and then since never actually went back to that. It starts first pop, and idles by itself. I've adjusted the throttle a little bit just to allow it to idle, but yeah. Never gave, gave me a problem. And the turbo is? A master power. I honestly can't tell you the specs because I'm not a turbo man. <laughs> this is my first turbo conversion I've ever oh, done. Cool. I think we need to go for a drive. Yeah, let's go for a move. That sounds hot. That's smooth. That's smooth. I've never skipped it out of the door, so that has a real nice note. Yeah, it's quiet, eh? That's nice. It's got a real, you can have a turbo for it. I've got an LSD sitting there ready to go into this. So at some stage, I'll do the LSD. But, um, at the moment, the yeah, everything seems pretty good. Um, I want to fly four though. This yep. is that pretty whiny. Was that a second hand one? Yes, I did. Um, I got it picked it up for 1200 bucks. That's pretty cheap. Yeah, well, it was a friend that I did a, a gearbox conversion for, and um, he had this in his car at first, and then he's like, Oh, I need to get a new one. Do you want my old one? And I'm like, Yeah, I'll have it. And at the moment we're pushing, I think it's 550 newton meters of torque. Yep. And 270s. 270 kilos, yep. uh, 380 horsepower. Yep. So it's quite tamed. It's uh, boosting at 9 psi at the moment. So it's nowhere near what I want. E engine stock standard? engine is stock standard not even gas gets replaced yeah and um what size injectors you got in it um i'm running the 7m gt uh, ge injectors so apparently Th three um 315s yes I think like so. a green one yeah the green one yes. 315 high impedance 315s yeah so the reason i went for that is because they straight swapped and um at first I wanted to have this all factory and with the uh, factory ECU, but you know how uh, projects go. Next moment you are spending a lot of money on a lot of things for it. Oh, I wish. Well, the, the results you get out of when you put an aftermarket ECU in it, yeah. it just opens them right up, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. It, um, it's the main thing to start with really, you know. If you get a good ECU, even the factory usually is capable of a bit of power. Um, I think I've heard of people, like well you take the stock car people with their carburetors, they were pushing 450 horsepower. And then some. Yeah. It goes well, smooth. It's very smooth and uh, honestly I want to take it in for another tune. Yep. But. At the moment, it's such a good driver, eh? It is um, good on fuel, it's a reliable daily driver, $80 a, um, a week on fuel, and that's driving from um, home to work and a little bit of driving around. And come on, it's a fast car, I can't help myself no. playing around in it, eh? And no one would know. Exactly. And when it's parked there, no one would know. Yeah. Yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, this is my workshop, but yeah. everything up to the exhaust manifold is all on YouTube. Everyone can watch it if they want to at Car Mods R Us. And yeah, that's cool. pretty much it. Yeah, you're probably pushing the limits of those little tires, eh? <laughs> Definitely. Um, at the moment, it's not suited. So, um, I'm still running. It's got a Waft Rego, and this is a JZZ30 body. Uh, body. Oh, so this wasn't even a Sora to start, I uh, wasn't a, a Z, UZ to start with. My first car though was a UZ, and um, I tracked that, realised that um, the normal aspirated UZ is not good enough for me, and I really want something faster. Yep. So that's why I went for this. The manifold's fairly simple. 
Yes, yeah, just straight log style forward, um, sigil 90s into uh, dairy tube straights. And and where power steer? Power steer is in here. I went um, Holden Berlina power steering pump. Like it, similar to an Astra. Yes, exactly. So um, the obviously my pipes come straight forward, so I couldn't get my power steering pump back in there. And come on, electric power steering pump is the future, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we've, I've got a video with, oh, I haven't edited it. I did, we did a Sylvia, Drift Sylvia, with yeah. electric power steer. And yeah. it was just so simple, yeah, so easy to set up. Pretty wise and feed and return, really. It was pretty straightforward, and I thought that's a perfect place for it. It's out of the way. There's heaps of room with a Sora. Of course, by the, when you strip all this out, and I don't see any fans at the moment. Uh, fans are up front. Oh, you've got some fans in front? Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. So I'm running the like uh, Falcon Falcons. Fans because they like uh, moving that air. Yep. Because you've got so much room, you, there's heaps of room in the front of a store just to put whatever you want in there. Yeah. Only problem that I got that I'm going to change in the future is I'm going to get a smaller wastegate so I don't have to talk my um, radiator forward like I do. What size is that wastegate? Uh, it's a 50 mil. So the 50 mil I'll stay with, but I'll go for a small um, uh, turbo smart or something like that. Is something a little bit more compact. Well, oh, yeah. that's cool. Let me just... As I said, it's got a mind of its own, this one. Good. That should be everything, that, mm -hmm. hopefully. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've actually opened the box now. Mm -hmm. You deflowered the, the link box. Cut the fancy seal, it was yep. that bloody brand new. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely deflowered now. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking it home here tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep look after that nicely. Yeah, no, I'm quite excited now. Well, we can grab Kyle's numbers. Out of his computer. Yeah, for a start. Is he running the exact same computer? He's running still. Okay. So that's but the on this one, pretty much. So. Yeah, it'll be slightly different because it's just supercharged. Will come a lot earlier. Yeah. So the numbers will be different, but I got we got plenty of numbers. And they're nice, simple cores to work with, nice and small. So with mounting these, instead of them being in row like that, do you have them that way? Cut yep. them off so they can yep. turn? Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah. real easy. I face them all forward or backward or something like that. Yeah, yeah I face them all back. Yeah. I put them all backwards. Yeah. Am I right with that, that um, this bank on this side is all the odd numbers? So 1357, 2466, that's what? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've actually finished the video of the last one I wired. But yeah. yeah, wired to cylinder order. So, and it, this sounds funny to say you wired a cylinder order because it kind of makes sense when you say it. But in the past, some of the ECUs didn't change their cylinder order internally. But now you wire number one injected to number one and number one core to number one. Yeah. You put the firing order into the ECU and the ECU does all the, the sorting out. Okay. So it's, that's really simple. Cam sensor on this, a uh, crank sensor. Yep. Left hand cam sensor. Yep. So passengers, the one I'm siding, the side I'm standing on. Yep. Um, two knock sensors because it's got knock control in the storm. Yep. Cam sensor, TPS, idle speed. Pretty basic. Yep. So the map, actually... map sensor, wherever you bring out the map sensor, and map sensor of course goes into the under the supercharger. Yeah, I was just thinking about the mounting at the back, so we're just running a putting up the back of the spin on there. So yep. Nice and the back. Yep. Um, the ejectors I've gone for are actually seven. You've got seven fifties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I do want to go for quite a bit of boost. Don't know for that. But um, yeah, and the the, the exact same body to stop as long as those. So Easy. Same thing to do with you. So really, they're on the EP1 plug. Um, yeah, the throttle body is 102 mil. GM style throttle body. Should breathe pretty good on that. Yep. Yeah. And of course, leave the st stock ECU in place. Yep. It'll only do temp uh, for the gauge, for the dash, and but it'll do the pull up for the aircon as well, help your aircon, because it goes to that factory ECU and then back. Yep. And if you had, didn't have that, the aircon wouldn't function because there isn't the pull up to give the signal back. Is the tactic signal going through that ECU as well? Nope, so the tack goes directly from the link. Yep, so they use I've, the oh, do you want the pinouts for it too? I got the pinouts. Oh, for this? For, for the Hilux. Oh, right, okay. Yep. So I better give you that too. 
Does all this get ditched all together? So these can just be unplugged and then de back through. Pull all that out. So none of that needs to stay plugged in, just actual ECU on time. So the ECU is going to keep power yep. and earths. Yep. So oh, from this loom, it pretty much keeps the earths yep. and the temp sensor. Okay. So there's a, an earth out. So there's the E2, yep. I think they call them. E2, out to the temp sensor, the temp sensor and the earths. And that's pretty much all that you get left with in this loom. Yep. And there's a, then there's inside where the plugs are that plugs in. Yep. And the power thing. feeds in the other couple of plugs. Yep. So I've got those pinouts. So just get the basic coming through here, just the temp sensor one and the aircon coming through. And that's pretty much it. And then ditch that big chunky loom. Yeah, and there's a start. Oh, there's a start there's wire. Because the power feeds come into here. Yep. So I've got the diagrams into the fuse box as well. Yep. You've got to like narrow all this down. Yep. Nice short loop. Yep. Yeah, and you, must, and you put your fan wiring out into here as well. Yeah. So you run your fan triggers into there. Yep, there's room for a relay in there. So yeah. There, there's room for a couple of relays if you want them. Yep. It's real simple. Yep. Do you recommend running the original diesel radio? I ran it in the last one, so. The last one wasn't supercharged. No. But being a diesel radio, it's sort of cool, so. But it's just depending on what I can get in there, plus fan space as well. I think it should be okay. Yeah. Good shroud on it and good good quality fans. I was going to put There's, I was going to put a big 15 inch fan on it, but then make it shroud as well, so yep. that the fan was central, and then yeah, so the shroud can actually draw off more corners, not just the fan surface area. So just get like a stainless steel, you know, sheet folded up and yep. secure it to it. The big problem you have with these is is your frontal area as well. Crappy flow here. Crappy flow in here. Yep. But this one isn't the four wheel drive. Like I do quite a few four wheel drives, like big bull bars. Yep. That that becomes an issue. Yeah. I've actually got a set of headers in the car too. I've, you? Have you just not seen my headers? No, well they flip this in here, nicely. I'll tell you when I do the next one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I'll need to make actual decent power. This is just to start with yep. a box style manifold mat, which is a real log log manifold, but yeah, actually for a bit of decent flow, you know, if you can't get it out, you can't get it in, so yep. yeah, it will need something quite decent on it. Yep, I'll, I'll get the headers. So they're off to the South Island, but I happen to have them in the car. Okay. I also do them without that cone on. Yep. So what I've done is I've made like the same thing, yep. but it's only tacked, so they're not welded on. Yep. And this cone is separate yep. for the mod because I'm modifying things, and if yep. they don't fit, you can just tack it. You can change angle of that. Yeah. If you want, yeah. Yeah. The same thing. Oh. If you needed a pipe that needed a bit more of a chink in it or something around the steering, yeah. Yeah. You just whip a pipe off, give it a change. Yep. Real easy. That's the that's the goal. There you go. That's another thing I've got to ask you too, is like, um, a few sensors in that, do need to run them? So my, did it, my day didn't go to plan. I was hoping to turn up here and show you the CAN Lambda kit. So what I recommend you do is you wire it for a CAN Lambda, yep. which I'll give you the diagrams for it, and just run a single sensor partway back for when we tune it. The sensor, you can put a big long sensor on it, you can put a wide band sensor on it, yep. and so it actually, you can use it for tuning properly. Um, really neat unit don't worry about i wouldn't even worry about the, the sensors at the front the narrow bands i would just plan in the future to put a wide band on yeah okay and i'll do your deal on one of those and put it in a merge where's your merge you come down uh, my merge uh, it's just behind the gearbox yeah, so it's a little way back but it'll still be fine we can adjust the settings just fine yeah and use a can limit okay and i'll give you the pin out for it Easy, and I've got one I do for tuning. Yep. So when we go to fire it up, if you have a port in your join, mm -hmm. I can put a sensor on it, my test sensor, I put the can lander on it, we can plug it into your ECU, yep. set it up, have a bit of a drive, check it's good, yep. and that, that, I've got one I use for tuning. That's yep. how good they are. So once the tune is on, that's pretty much it. You only use it for the tuning. Yeah, I like, to, I like to keep it in there for the, after that though, okay. because you can set it to self adjust, or you know, like you can, you can have it function like a narrow band sensor to and, and be tuning all the time, be adjusting that mixture, that final little bit of the mixture yeah. all the time. Um, and it's really nice as a diagnostic too. You know, checking that it's not running lean. Yeah. You can set it up on your phone. Nice. You can dongle it into your phone. So you've got it on your phone, you can be driving along and see what your mixture is on your phone. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay? Yeah. So you can do that sort of stuff. I'll bring you other heaters, eh? Yeah. And you can test them? Yeah, we can just sell it for like, yeah. 
So your schedule in the next couple of weeks is wiring? Oh uh, yeah, yep. Try and make some noise. Yep, remove all the stuff in that's not needed. Yep. And then um, yeah, mount the ECU and fly from there, so yeah. Yep, I've got that Hilux wiring, so I've got all that. I've got it on a, on a folder. Okay, right. So anyway, you're gonna, you're gonna mount that first? Yes. And make sure everything is where it needs to go on the engine bay, and then feed the line through and trim accordingly. Too soon, so. When you do these, yep. so work out your pinouts yep. and pull all the extra wires out. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, and I even I pull the power wires out oh, yeah. until I've wired it. Yep. Okay, because your power wires are only going to need to be so long. Yeah. Three hundred long because yep. it's inside. Yep. It's only when your sensor is in the receiver. Yeah. Yep. So you mark them out. So run them out. So you get rid of a whole lot of extra wires, and you can just put the pins back in. Yep. Okay. It's real it. simple. I even went all out. Connectors for them. Oh, yep. And that's it was. Nice, they bought the special tool. <laughs> oh, shit, the proper tool for them. I did. Have you, you've got the proper tool? The proper ratcheting for any tool. The proper tool that, that folds them up into the little creases and right over. The braid plus the, there's a special glue type shrink, so what it does is it glues to the braid. Correct. And glues the thing, stops du the sliding. Double, double action. Yep. These aren't small enough. I, I have a solution. Oh, yes. Would you like to borrow my spare crimpers? Special link crimping tool. The proper link crimping tool mm -hmm. for the little tiny terminals for the. I would love to. Thought you might. At the end of the job, if you want to buy them, I'm not going to say no. Well, yeah, I do need to do this car through. So. Yeah, so I'd rather you use the proper tools and you find out to use the proper tools and you get to the end of the job, you go, hey, can I own them? And I'll go, no problem at all. Or if not, you just brought them back to me. Okay? So that will get, and you'll find it on those little crimps, are really good. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a solder down now, isn't it? Oh, I still solder it, like if it's old shitty wires, I still will solder. Yep. But all the new stuff, pretty much it's, it's crimp everywhere. Yep. Crimp the easy. other thing you can actually do is, you know the, the like the Lucar terminals that we've got? Mm. If you cut the, the spade bit off, yep. the actual connecting bit, there's a little, cr you can use that little crimp, the crimp the for the small stuff. Yep. Okay, you can use that as well. I, I, I have a spear for most things. Um, it was actually when I was in the US. Crimping pliers. I needed some crimpers. I should have taken a set with me. So you'll see these are quite small. They only do... Yeah. See, they're quite narrow. Yeah. So you have to do... That's a nice lever action on there. Yeah, yeah you, you, you end up doing each separate. So yep. you've got the crimp onto the wire. Yep. And then you've got... A bigger a bigger section to go onto um, the insulator. Yep. Onto the so and you actually uh, so often yeah. and often I find you don't you, you use this the biggest of the crimps yep. for the insulator for the rubber uh -huh. for the rubber seal in the back of it. Yeah, those go a lot smaller, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that'll get that going. Nice. Take care of that. Cool. Cool. Into it. Catch you later. Thank you.